Gordon Hayward has been flying a bit under the radar during the playoffs. But after a tough seven game series win over the favored Clippers, it's time to give him some hype. If we throw out his game four numbers where he played only nine minutes due to a minor injury, check out how he filled up the box score. And comparing his regular season numbers to his postseason output, that increase shows us that he's ready to take his game to the next level in the most important part of the season. Against the Clippers, he scored 53 total field goals, 45 of them in the half court. And of those baskets, 11, almost a quarter, were on virtually the same play. So let's dive into what they ran so well to get him such makeable shots. The play starts out with misdirection as Rodney Hood Iverson cuts across the floor to the left side. Gobert receives the ball in the pinch post after his Iverson screen. Watch Hayward on the weak side. He cuts up the back screen for Ingles, then comes around the high post for a handoff. His man cannot turn the corner with him, and Jordan tries to contest, but too late. Now I know what you're thinking. Gordon Hayward is a handsome man, and one of the reasons is because of his smooth shave. Now I can't prove it, but I'd be willing to bet he uses Harry's razors to get that shave. And if you go to harrys.com slash coachnick now, you'll get their trial set for free. So look at Hayward's face, feel your chin, and click on the link to get the best quality razors for the lowest price by going to my link, harrys.com slash coachnick. Now here's similar action as Hayward slips the back screen for Jingles, then receives the handoff. Notice how the split screen gets Mabao Mute leaning on his right foot. Trailing so far, the Clippers are forced to switch. And while Hayward doesn't score on this ISO against DeAndre Jordan, he follows one of our golden rules. After penetration, sprint behind the line. Great ball movement finds him a good look for the corner three. Here it is again, this time with Hayward slipping the back screen before sprinting to receive the handoff. That gets him a two-step lead over Mabah Mute, who can't get there in time for another Hayward pull-up. They inverted this action too, with Hayward getting the back screen, and you can see Hill was looking to receive the handoff, but Favors has the option of feeding to Hayward down low. On the mismatch, Hayward buries the turnaround. Same play again, this time the back screen was so effective, Hayward gets the layup. The back screen was also set at the top of the key, allowing Hayward to take advantage of blown switches by the defense and Jordan's inability to step out and contest the long jumper. The progression of this action is way cool. Watch Hayward back screen Joe Johnson this time, and while we're waiting, Jingles gets a ball screen towards the corner. Instead of a handoff, it's an elbow screen for Hayward who curls around wide open for the triple. On the out-of-bounds play, they run the split higher and in front of the high post. Hill forces the switch on his cut, the defense is late, and Hayward has another three ball. They run it again here with the same split in front of the high post. When Hayward's man gets screened off, there's no one there to pick him up on the stop and pop. And this is pistol action which is related to the others with a handoff into pick and roll, getting Hayward two steps ahead of the defender, Jordan never steps out, and Hayward nails yet another three. It remains to be seen if Hayward will get these same types of looks in the next round. But knowing how the Warriors defend, chances are he won't get any of these. In fact, the Warriors run very similar offense, which in turn helps their defense because they face it in practice so often. So if the Jazz have any hope of hanging with the Warriors, they're going to need Hayward to hit tougher shots than what we saw against the Clippers in the first round.